Bimi in 2011. White River National Forest in Colorado. Out hunting elk. Out in a woods with my rifle and reach a larger stream during my hike out to where I would set up. On a ridge that overlooked the stream, appreciating nature and shit. Look down and see a large hairy shape maybe 300 yards upstream. Oh cool maybe it's a bear standing. Look through my scope. Not a frigging bear. I never believed in Bigfoot stories, but I don't know what the hell I saw out there if not Sasquatch. Its proportions were more human-like than bear-like. The legs and arms were too long to be a bear and when it turned I saw no snout. Not in a woods, but in a desert. Be me. B-19. Cousin and I load up FJ Cruiser for weekend desert camp slash excursion. Two other FJs in the convoy. Our friend Anon is in the Navy and decides to bring his frigging personal arsenal. Everything from ARs to AKs. Bunch of handguns too, but I'm not a slash K slash Omondo so I can't name him. Well hey fun with these dot JPG. Little did we realize that they'd actually save our frigging lives. Get to Anza State Park at night. Sloppily set up camp in near darkness. Job well done, crack a few beers. Make fire and gather around it. Start planning out the next day. Everyone, five total, gathered around map reviewing the trails. Suddenly we all hear a scream of bloody murder. Sounded like a woman pleading for her life. Simultaneously look up to locate the sound. Everyone goes quiet to try to hear it again, nothing. Anon grabs his R and tells everyone to get behind him. Cousin and I know pretty hard and go back to his car to wait this out. It's about 1 AM at this point. Everyone decides to hop in cars turn on the overhead night lights to head in the direction of the scream. Stumble across a girl in bloody ass clothes after driving just a couple miles through the dirt. Pull over immediately. Navy Anon takes the lead. Knows that she is in shock so doesn't bother questioning her. Just give her water and a blanket. She was very cooperative and trusting of us. After she drank the water she stopped being hysterical and finally started talking. She was frigging abducted by someone, taken to a shack, and was about to be effing murdered. Radio police on our CB. Helicopter out within 20 minutes. Her report on where the house was inconclusive. No house there, no evidence of anyone being in the location she described. She made it out okay, ended up being airlifted out. Really strange frigging night though. No one was around for miles. None of us could explain how she was in that specific part of the desert at 1 in the morning. Not really paranormal, but damn. First major IRL nope. B12-13. to 13. Was hunting for pigs in the woods with my dad. Been snooping for about 3 hours. No pig signs or trails. Suddenly realize it's unearthly quiet for the woods. No bird song, no nothing. Then we hear heavy ass grunting. What waste hat dot jpg. We are in small clearing, nothing around us slash close enough to be that loud. Look at dad, he looks at me. Let's get the hell out of here. All the way back to the truck is silent. Used to live in the middle of the woods in Oregon with my uncle and his family. Went to visit them in the summer a few years ago. Driving a four-wheeler on some old logging roads in the middle of nowhere. Carrying a G23 because of mountain lions and shit. Know the woods pretty well because I had lived there for a bit. Hop off and go exploring near a stream in the woods. Come across an old, dilapidated cabin. Decide to explore it. Before I go in, I look around back to see if there's anything cool. There's a Ford Bronco and a Subaru station wagon parked. Based on the condition of the cabin, they obviously didn't belong there. Look in the windows, there's a USB sitting in the seat of the Subaru. Consider stealing it, but decide it would be a dick move. Hear people approaching. Five to six guys are coming out of the woods with AKs and SKSs. Nope.jpg they hadn't seen me, so I start sneaking away back to my ATV. Someone yells hey. Shit 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 shit. 
run the frig away, ATV starts on the first try. Go back home, never mentioned it to anyone. The land I was on belonged to a logging company, so there shouldn't be anyone living on it, I don't know what was going on. I lived in an aged urban Alabamian town most of my life and, as is the case with most of Alabama, you're never more than 15 minutes away from an extremely rural area. Between the ages of 11-13ish I hung out with a bro that lived near the woods and had a few really good in a woods stories. At brother's house. To the side and behind the house it's in a clearing surrounded by crops and pastures. Beyond the crops and pastures were woods with very large trees, but fairly spaced out. They were tall enough to block out a lot of light yet sparse enough for there not to really be a designated trail. No houses for half a mile in either direction, very poorly lit so on clear nights you really could see so much of the sky. In front of the house, there's the road with very steep ditches on either side and on the side of the road opposite of the house, was a much more thick wooded area, maybe 20 feet from the road, trees not as big and very dense, however, there existed trails for hunting purposes and general hiking. Had a friend that lived at the end of the road, about a half a mile down that we'd visit. Walking back to bro's house with bro from friend that lived at the end. As we're approaching the darkest point, and maybe halfway mark between houses, I can slightly make out what appears to be a white shed in a woods. Mention it to bro and he sees it too. We both stop when we're directly across from it on the road. Can distinctly make out the borders of the shed, and even take notice the shape of a window frame. We both stare in awe for a minute, because we know with absolute certainty there was never a shed there, and it's right on the border of the woods so it would be apparent if it ever were there. Ear-burstingly loud crash comes inside the shed. Me and friend straining every ounce of energy we have out of our bodies, to sprint until our lungs gave out to make it up. Go back the following day in the sun. No shed. Supposed to be in the third to last line, to make it back. Another inner wood story. At same bro's house. His dad is ex-military with boxes of MREs and all sorts of guns stored in the house, in the sparse backwoods that I mentioned before. They owned a school bus that his dad used to hunt and has a bed, shelves of MREs, a couch and a love seat, toilet, wood stove, two barrels of filtered water, and a television. Me, bro, and three other friends hike out to the woods to stay the night in the bus. Bring snacks, blankets, a couple portable DVD players and some movies. Bro's dad makes us take a walkie-talkie out there but said not to wake him up unless it was an emergency. Kicking it with my brothers having a great time for a few hours. Around 3 AM our DVD players and phones have died so we're just talking, playing card games and, would you rather? Gets quiet at one point. Bus starts shaking slightly. No one says anything but the silence continues because we all acknowledged it but not aloud. Few minutes pass and we start talking again. Bus starts shaking again a little harder. Did you guys feel that or am I imagining it? Everyone feels it. We all go dead silent and wait. Hear the grass rustle around the back of the bus. We all start flipping our shit and frantically pulling up all the windows we had open. Bus starts shaking violently. Hear the screeching sound of something sharp scraping slash clawing the side of the bus near us. The oldest guy there is literally crying and hiding under a blanket not saying a word while the rest of us are freaking the hell out. Hear a very low growl coming from directly beneath the window. We're all frozen in place. Few minutes pass by and nothing happens. We're looking for the walkie-talkie to call bro's dad but can't find it anywhere. Suddenly hear blood-curdling shriek of something clearly inhuman. Almost all of us are in tears at this point. Words getting caught in our throats as we're frantically searching for walkie-talkie. Dumb motherfrigger that's been frozen solid not saying a word underneath the blanket and crying for 10 minutes was laying on it. Bus shaking harder than ever and still hearing footsteps around the bus in between shakes. Bro calls his dad on walkie-talkie, and is screaming at him to come down there, and tells him something is shaking. The bus and screeching and clawing at it. He tells us he's on his way and to stay inside and not open the bus door for anything but him. Couple minutes pass by of progressively lighter shakes. Suddenly see bro's dad sprinting down the trail towards the bus with some assault rifle with a light attached to it. Tells us to stay in the bus. 
he makes a couple passes around the bus looking for whatever it was. Comes back, he didn't see anything. We closely follow him as he leads us back to the house, done up and ready. None of us speak to each other for the rest of the night. His dad said the next day he thought it was likely a mountain lion, but none of us bought it for a second. I don't imagine anything with less than human strength could shake the bus as much as it was shaking. To this day that night remains the single most terrifying night of my life, and that was like seven years ago. I think that may have been the only time in my life I felt genuine terror. I genuinely feared for my life that night. The most obvious answer would likely be bear, but it was winter and there aren't many bears in that part of Alabama. It remains a possibility but the screech sounded much more human-like than bear. There was another occurrence in the dense woods opposite the front of his house where the white shed was. It's not really deserving of green text, but. Almost every time I went to bro's house during the winter we'd hike through the woods about a mile to a Christmas tree farm. Owners had a huge keg of hot, freshly prepared apple cider in their barn and would give out a large glass for free to anyone stopping by the farm. Hiking in the woods on the way there. We hear the distinct, distressed screams of one male and one female followed by a several minutes of what sounded like a pack of dogs barking. Sounded like it was between us and the farm. Kept hiking through the woods. Never saw anything. Get to the farm. Ask the owners if they had heard anything. They don't have a clue about what we're talking about. Never hear about it again. I've never told anyone on 4chan about that experience because nothing really came of it. It was broad daylight and since it was winter, visibility in the woods was pretty clear so nothing ever snuck up on us and spooked us. That's honestly more spooky than everything else I'm remembering. In year 8. Attending a private high school because screw public education is shit. On a school camp. In the middle of the woods slash scrub because why the hell not. We are doing orienteering and all that. It's time for nighttime orienteering. In the woods. At night. With little to no moonlight. I am having a blast. Scaring all my friends and telling scary, fake, stories. The girls are freaking out. The guys are laughing. Our mentor seems to be having a good time. Suddenly our mentor stops dead in her tracks. We stopped too, I thought she might have needed to take a whiz or something. See her scanning the darkness just outside of our torch range. Takes a moment but it eventually clicks when I see a big shadowy mass move behind a tree. Just my imagination please oh god. After a while most of the other kids are getting rowdy except one girl who's at the back. Slip back there to her as she's also scanning the tree line. She whispers to me asking if I saw it too. Damn it. Yes I did and it was big. Our mentor decides to radio in with the others to see if anybody is near our orienteering track. Everybody checks back saying they are on their designated tracks. I get worried as I hear that but play it off as just my imagination. Carefully our mentor decides to move on but keeps glancing back at us. Single file I fall to the back of the group, I have no idea why I did to be honest. Swear I hear twigs and other forest essentials snapping and breaking to my left. It's just my imagination. The girl who also saw this thing keeps looking over her shoulder to the left. I am trying to remain as calm as I can but internally my heart felt like it had just done meth. Our mentor picks up the pace a little. Wondering why. Hear what sounds like heavy steps to our right now. Oh wonderful. After only a few minutes we break into a clearing and the noises fade away. Still have the feeling of being watched. Our mentor does a head count then walks a bit away to radio in. Can't quite make out what she's saying. But I heard something along the lines of, we're being followed. The other kids are visibly disturbed now. Everyone is pretty quiet, except for a few who are whispering. Our mentor comes back and tries to put on a smile. Says that we got lost and we have to wait until our teachers and such come and find us. It's total BS but at least we're in a clearing. One of the guys beckons me over cause I knew him, sort of. He starts talking about yaois and all that. 
Please don't scare me anymore young man I am already about to have a heart attack. Saying that it's legend with the aborigines and all that. He says that's what he thinks is following us. I was convinced he was just trying to scare myself and the group cause he was, that guy but he did seem genuine. After what had felt like an hour, about 15 minutes, the mentor's radio starts going off. It's one of my teachers. He's asking if we're heading back to camp cause there is something in the forest coming their way. Before she can answer we hear him yell out from a distance away. Hey over here. All that nonsense. Then there was a really loud roar is the only way I can describe it. Really deep and long. All the girls and most of the guys start screaming. I am screaming internally but more frozen in fear on the outside. Mentor gets up and proclaims that we are getting out of here and getting back to camp. I guess the lie is over and nope.exe has been booted up. We double time it diagonally towards the teacher's voice. Basically jogging as fast as we can without losing each other. The footsteps return but the sound closer. Noping intensifies. Some kids begin to flat out sprint towards the dim light of the camp. Mentor is screaming at them to stay together. They are clearly in a state of shock or something like that and aren't listening. Our mentor starts swearing. Suddenly a rock comes flying over our heads. Smacks into a tree beside us shaking loose pine needles. Whatever is following us is getting closer and faster. We are about 40 meters away from the forest's edge. I can hear whatever these things are huffing and puffing alongside me. The kid in front of me is crying. I am not sure if I have shit my pants or am just sweating profusely. We break through the edge of the forest. Don't stop till we get to the teachers. Then I collapse out of adrenaline fueled fear running. Teachers insist on us not telling the other groups, who had been put on the bus. They say we are leaving in the morning. Eventually when we have calmed down the others are let off the bus. Supposedly they were playing games of some sort and didn't hear anything. The story was one of us got lost and the teachers had to come looking for us. Fast forward to about 2 am. Need to pee. Really don't want to but I will piss myself if I don't. Stand just a ways from the tent and do my business cause screw walking all the way to the outhouse. As I finish up I see movement at the edge of the tree line. Whatever it was, it was big. Tell myself it was just my tired mind and still being scared. I eventually talked to one of the girls from my group at school and she said that she had to go to the loo in the early hours of the morning. And while she was in the outhouse something big was walking around the camp. OFW B16 Live in a small Slavland town. Surrounded by woods. There is a small waterfall and a cave around one hour by foot in the woods. Me and my two friends go there pretty often in the summer. Decide to do the ultimate manly challenge. Start heading there at 1 AM. Pitch black outside. Didn't bring flashlights like the retards we are. Lighting the way with my shitty Nokia I had back then. Run out of battery. Whatever we've been here a million times we know the exact way. We get quite scared so we decide to bullshit and joke around to feel better. I start running forward shouting. New York. New York. Gotta beat the New York traffic. Please don't laugh. Took a wrong turn by mistake. My friends follow me. Run for a good 30 seconds. New York. New yo trip and fall down a small slope. Friends come down to check on me. I'm okay, just a bit bruised. Realize we're lost. No lights. Start walking in a direction thinking we'll recognize the area eventually and find our way to the waterfall. Find something like a hole slash cave in the rocks and terrain, hard to explain. It was modified by a human. Had a small roof and a constructed wall making it really tight and cozy. Had something resembling a desk. Improvised drawers from wood. Something like a bed. A mirror. Papers. Old empty ink tubes and feathers. Something like a journal with unrecognizable writings in it. Really old and rugged blankets. Wooden cups and bowls. A big old coat. A dull, rusty machete. 
symbols and carvings on the cave walls. Nope away from there and walk two hours till we find our way back. I wish I could have taken pictures. Too bad it was my last day there before I move as well, we never had a chance to find the place during daylight. Be a couple of years ago in woods with bro and friend. Go walking down hundreds of years old country path, do this a lot at night. Come to clearing and big field, owned by farmers, sometimes get chased by old fat farmer on quad bike. Standing there smoking chilling. All of a sudden ridiculously thick mist rolls over field in the space of like one to two minutes. All bit spooked but think it's pretty cool. Can't see 15 meters in front of you, not exaggerating run into mist to spook bro who is a bit freaked. Hear god awful cackling slash laughing coming from other end of field, it kind of goes uphill then back down the other side and sounded like was coming from over the hill. Nope can't find bro or friend. After about 5 minutes find bro. Think friend is making noise, feels good. Friend comes out of entrance to field was hiding waiting for us to come out and spook us. Then what's making noises? Suddenly mist rolls out of field as quick as it came in. All like WTF just happened here? Also no more noises. Walk back to the car about 30 minutes through woods. Hear rustling and things snapping around us all the way back. Did not sleep well that night. Plan ATV trip with friend out to abandoned area of mines in western Wyoming, he gets sick and quits out of going on the trip. Go on the trip anyways carrying my bag and rifle. Come across random mine and decide it's time to explore. Put on gas mask and headlamp, duct taped on, and enter the mine. Be exploring around the mine and walk down semi-collapsed tunnel. Enter into area where walls are splattered with blood, and blood-covered tools and bandages lie around the ground. Pick over the stuff looking for something interesting to take with me. Suddenly begin hearing footsteps and moving around from a different nearby tunnel, and begin to get the hell out. Rush outward climbing and running hearing more footsteps. Get outside and rip off mask turning and watching the entrance into the mine while backing up to ATV. Get on ATV and drive away. Out Ina Everglades. Going stargazing. Rifle and revolver at home, just a big ass knife. Indian land. Layout chair on bike system. Pitch black everywhere but the white of the roadway. Keep hearing rustling near the canal, traveling up and down a heavily brushed 10 meter stretch of bank. Starting to nope. There are alligators and shit, which I don't actually care about, but the last thing I want is a frigging Florida panther thinking I'm a white-tailed deer. Thinking about packing up, it's overcast and shitty. Start hearing branches break and sloshing from the other side of the dike that goes out onto the swamp. Skunkape.jpg Nope stories and most request getting to me. Knife out watching the blackness to see if a profile comes up over the embankment. Screw this, load up my shit and drive off. Damn, a lot of Bama brothers on tonight. I'm from Blunt County myself. I'll share an Inawood story of my own. Lived in this large apartment neighborhood I guess you would call it. Large area of woods directly behind them. Was a youngster back then, around 10 years old. Started to hang out with all the other guys that lived in the apartments. Found my two best friends there. Anyway around 10 of us decide to explore the woods one day. Extremely thick with all sorts of plants poison ivy slash trees slash bushes. Walking straight back for about an hour. We stumble upon this area that is completely cleared, no vegetation or anything. Just dirt floor and what looked like charred remains of a building or something. We decide to make this our club. All 10 of us decide to take a chair or whatever we wanted to sit on out there from our respective houses. We decide to clear the area of the burnt debris. After clearing the area we realized that we could never get the burnt look gone from the R. We then dubbed it, the burnout. Anyway after 2 years of all of us chilling, camping, having the best time of my life with my brothers the area suddenly. Starts constantly smelling like smoke. 
we are always careful of bringing anything that could catch fire. Haven't made a fire in months. A month after we started smelling that everyone became distant and paranoid. I can't really explain it, but everyone seemed off. Me and my two best slash B slash Raz go out one day to the burnout and are just chilling doing some homework. By this time we have desks and so much other shit out there, tarps for the weather. Hear this weird whimpering noise that immediately makes my hair stand up and I immediately jump into fight mode. My brothers hear it as well. We're just standing waiting. Absolutely no sound. Ears ringing like crazy. Suddenly smell smoke. Hear someone's gargled scream slash yell of pain saying, it burns oh god it burns. Me and my friends book it as fast as we possibly can. I don't even stop when we're out of the woods I just keep running until I hit my house. Within 30 minutes local fire department is flying full force to the woods and immense clouds of smoke are rising. 90% of the forest is burned down. Me and my brothers are blamed for it. No one believes us or our story. Every other member of our burnout brothers disappear without a trace. I have only heard from one of them besides my best brother since then and he's so frigged up. He's been in and out of mental institutions and won't talk about the burnout. I haven't talked about this since it happened to anyone except slash x slash now. Still have no idea what happened there. Live in PA, spends time hiking up in the Poconos. Friend who I used to hike with in the Poconos went down to Appalachian State University. Always telling me how I should come down for in a woods fun. Summer 06 drive down from PA to NC to spend a week backpacking. Introduces me to his friends, get frigging retarded drunk the first night having a good time. Next day we start getting shit together on a hike they planned out in Roan National Park. Should have got started at 8 am didn't get out till 1 p.m. due to hangover. Plan to be out for four nights. Split up the gear evenly among us and one of the guy's girlfriend drives us out to the start of the trail. Trail is little more than a game path. Tell her we will call her for pickup from a dinner on the other side of the park from a pay phone for pickup. Now I was in decent shape, never smoked a day in my life. And have a decent amount of hiking under my belt. Even though we weren't even that high I'm huffing and puffing like a fat chain smoker. They set a brisk pace and I struggle to keep up. They keep asking if I'm okay, just tell him I'm getting used to the elevation change. Struggle to keep up till late afternoon almost dusk. Never have I pushed myself so hard. Heat beat in my ears, vision is blurry. The group keeps stopping for me to catch up rest of the group is trying to push for a campsite i'm slowing them down i drag further and further behind the group every time they look back i wave at them to keep going friend comes back and tells me the group is gonna go ahead of us to get a campsite going he is gonna stay back with me tell him to go on i'm okay he is tells me it's not a big deal and that they understand at this point i never felt worse in my life couldn't catch my breath. Pounding headache, can't see right. To be honest I couldn't go on if I wanted to. Tells me to sit down and take a rest, well catch up to them at whatever campsite they pick. Said we will see the camp from the trail. Sit down trying to catch my breath, close my eyes for what feels like only a moment. When I open them it's pitch black out. Call out for my friend, no answer. Still feel shitty but better than before. Fumble out my headlamp. High, medium, and low mode don't work. Only moonlight mode works, doesn't this when the battery is low. Strap it on, it's bright enough to follow the trail anyways. Glance at my watch 1am, been out for a while. Call out for my friend again. No answer. A little freaked out but figure he went to the camp, couldn't be that far right? Start off at a slow pace, keeping my breathing in check. Watching my footing moving along. Hike the trail for about an hour. No sign of my friends. Start to wonder if I'm even on the trail. Thinking I may do some backtracking but decide against. Go on for a bit, still no signs of my group and getting less and less sure of being on the trail. 
Look back at my watch, still says 1 a.m., shit's broke. So notice the day is off. Says Monday when we started off on Friday. Start panicking a little and just yell my friend's name as loud as I can. No answer, start to backtrack to where I started off from. Somehow ended up on a path up on a ridge. Never in my life have I seen so little signs of human life. Only really see what I think is Boone way off in the distance. Start to think about just heading down the ridge towards the city. Start heading down the mountain towards slope towards the light of Boone. Soon as get a little ways down the light disappears behind the tree line. At this point I'm panicking about being lost, pushing myself too hard at elevation I was not adjusted to. Halfway down the slope when I hear something from the top of the ridge. I say something cause I'm no sure what I heard, just something. Like almost a log being dropped or something. Kinda like a thud. Can't see the trails I was on but thought it was my friends and start yelling at the top of my lungs. Hear a yell back, now at the time it didn't occur to me that the yell didn't sound like any one of my group. Was just happy I got found. Yell hey guys, I'm coming back up. Don't move. Start trying to get back up the ridge. Struggling, pushing myself hard again. About have the distance to the top of the ridge when I stop and try and see my friend's flashlight. Only having my headlamp on moonlight mode I can't really see anything. At this time I see what I think is a figure coming towards me. Think it's my friend, oh shit man I was freaking out thought. Stopped talking as I got a look at the figure and no frigging way was it human. I mean no frigging way, was too big and not the right shape looked too slender in some parts but too thin in others. Now my headlamp does this thing where if the battery is low, it will only shine moonlight mode, but if I switch it to turbo mode it will light up for half a second before kicking back down to moonlight. Reach up and switch my light to turbo to light up the figure. The bright flash was enough to light up this thing in front of me, about 30 feet up the slope. What I remember most was it had a face of like almost a possum but it was bigger than a human. Scream out the worst scream I had in me and turn around to run down the slope. Only took 5 steps before I tripped and rolled down the slope. Things get really hazy at this point. I remember coming to a stop and a sharp pain from the base of my head down. My neck that felt like I was being stabbed as I moved my head was laying on my belly trying to move forward down the rest of the slope. Every time I tried to look back the pain in my neck would almost make me pass out. Now I remember hearing something coming up on me as I crawled. Doesn't make too much sense being I was moving so slow anything that wanted me could have got me. Head was spinning, pain was unbearable in my neck. I'm struggling to catch my breath. Felt like the thing was right on top of me. At this point my body stopped listening to me and I couldn't move anymore. I think I passed out here for a while, it's hard to tell. I think I passed out cause I go from hyperventilating to mostly. Calm breathing in a snap. I slowly push myself over on my back. Still only the moonlight, still can't really see. Reach up for my headlamp to try the turbo mode again but before my arm gets to it shooting pain my neck brings my arm back down. Lay on my back for a while trying to see or hear anything up on the slope, nothing. Slowly start to get up, every time I flex my neck I get crippling pain down my body. Start shuffling down the rest of the slope, going from tree to tree leaning on it. Pure panic and at this point I'm crying hysterically. Just straight sobbing. Trying to rack my brain on what to do, keep trying to head straight to where I think I seen the lights of Boone, the town the college is in. After a while my sobbing slowly stops and I start thinking normal. Trying to figure out how bad my neck is hurt and how far I got to go. Resting leaning on a tree, close my eyes for a second. All of a sudden I feel something on my back, I turn around swing my arms the best I could but I get blinded by light. I'm still swinging, kicking not really being able to see due to the light blowing out my eyes. I end up on the ground, my arms are being held at my side. 
pain in my neck is making me sick but I keep struggling. Then my eyes start to adjust and it turns out it was my friend and one of the hiking buddies. Only thing is they are talking but I can't hear a thing. I nod my head and the let go, I keep saying I can't hear them. They are looking at me like I'm missing a face. The other guy takes some water of the his bag and gives it to me, I drink it trying to tell them what happened. Between gulps. Keep saying my neck is hurt. They help me up and with my friend's help we start walking. They keep mouthing words to me. Can just make out they are saying campsite. Slowly we get to camp, my hearing coming back little by little. Get to camp I sit down on a log. At this point my hearing is at 50% of what I should be. I ask my friend why did he leave me. He says he couldn't wake me up and went back to the camp for help, when he got back I was gone. Tell them what happened, both look at me like I'm crazy. Ask where the other are, they tell me looking for me. Start to feel silly about even telling them about the thing. Start to think it was in my head. Pain in my neck starts to ease up. Start asking about what time the others will be back. They say the wood return at midnight. Tell them I'm gonna sleep for a bit. Lay down by the fire sleeping. Friend wakes me up looking scared as shit, the other guys returned to camp and was packing shit up. We gotta go right now right now. Hear the guys that were looking for me talking about something in the woods. I ask, did it look like a possum? The guys just stare at me before the one goes we gotta get the hell out of here. Hike out the way we came, once again being slower than the group. Only my friend stays with me as the rest of the group goes out sight. Don't worry man I'm not leaving you. I keep stopping to catch breath and rest my neck. My friend stays with me, doesn't even rush me. Don't worry man I've been out in the woods at dark up here, I can get us back. Keep moving at a slow pace. Friend keeps saying things like, you guys just got spooked, load a thing in the woods go bump in the night. Resting with my back to a tree my friend just looking around waiting for me. Look up at his face as he looks behind us, his face frozen. He licks his lips, we got to move faster. At the point he turns and grabs my backpack strap and start pulling me along. Don't question and push as hard as I can. After running for what seems like forever we get to a road and see the group huddled around a payphone. They called the one guy's girlfriend for a ride. She shows up and takes me right to the hospital. Keep trying to tell her the story and she's not buying it. We still talk about it but I haven't moved down like I promised. Nice, I've been living here for about 8 years now. Never had much paranormal experiences here though. Had a lot more up in PA where I'm from. Albion, PA. Hanging out with some friends near a creek. Hear big sploosh noises farther down. Like the noise when you throw big rocks in water. Go down to look. All the water is rippling but no one is there. It's a deep pocket of water in the creek bed. See huge shadows swimming under the water. Bigger than a human. Get the hell out of there. I don't really do these but it's 4.40 am and I'm feeling kind of shitty. Be me. B18. Happened a few years ago. Sunny June afternoon. Walking home after college, I live pretty close. Have to walk through this forest to get home. Walking through, I decide to go down a side track I rarely take. Don't know why, just felt like it. Anyway. I listen to music when I walk and daydream hardcore. I start to realize nothing around me looks familiar. I stop and take out my headphones. Music's blaring, turn it off from iPod. Look around. Dead silent. Stand there for about a minute, trying to imagine my way back. The forest is pretty damn big and I don't want to get lost. Suddenly I hear some sort of moaning coming off to the side of the track I was on. Like someone trying to lift a heavy weight or something. I peer through the trees and see movement on the other side of this clearing. I move forward a bit, trying to see. I make out a large figure, dragging something. 
I look closer. It's a frigging body bag. The figure drags it to this small hut. He opens the door, kicks in the body bag that seemed to have something pretty heavy in it. Closes the door. Picks up a frigging axe from the floor and walks away. I stand there for a few minutes. My heart pounding like a frigging .50 caliber. I want to turn around and run away so bad. Something's off though. Like I need to go to the shack. Thug it dot jpg. I start to walk through the clearing, my head on a constant swivel. I think I saw movement from the body bag whilst the guy was dragging it. Like something inside it was moving about. I get to the shack and press my ear to the door. I hear some soft whimpering inside. Holy shit someone's in there. Suddenly I hear twigs cracking behind me. The guy's coming back. Thug. I open the door of the shack and jump in. Now I think about it, it wasn't so smart. I'm standing there, in the dark, my breathing going mental. This guy, this frigging guy, walks right up to the door. I can hear his breath on the other side of it. Oh effing shit. JPG. I'm going to have to fight my way out. I look around in the dim light for a weapon. There is frigging nothing I can use. I hear a slight creak. He is opening the door. Oh shit, I keep thinking I'm going to die. The door opens fully. He is siloted in the light. He doesn't even hesitate. He takes a step forward. Walks through the door. Gets on the floor. We both walk the dinosaur. Live in Florida, edge of Alabama. Working at a marine shop, fixing boats and shit. Get to be good friends with the owner of the shop. He tells me about his property he owns in Alabama, completely barren besides two picnic tables in a clearing. Property is big, really big. I never bothered to ask him. He invites me to go with him one time with his buddies. Of course I'm gonna go you bet your ass. Land is awesome, have a great time. Has a river running through the middle of it and everything. Spent day fishing and walking around the property. Make it home no problem. Get to be good friends with the owner. Enough to ask him if I can visit the property whenever I want. He says of course, not a problem. Just don't leave trash out there. Have a friend who's basically lived off of video games and Mountain Dew. Never gone into the woods, literally. He wants to go with me. Haven't gone by myself yet so I say hell yay. We get there, and set up camp. Show him the river and give him a pole to fish with. He is digging it, having fun being in a woods. It gets kind of dark, and not knowing the area I tell him we should go to our tents. Hess apparently having a blast and tells me to go on ahead. Tell him he doesn't know the way back. He says he does, he remembered. No he is bullshitting, but I go back anyways. Get to my tent, frigging exhausted. Halfway asleep when I hear his ass screaming at the top of his lungs. Look out of the tent and he is sprinting full speed to me. Oh shit. Jumps into my tent hyperventilating. Ask him WTF happened. Says he heard laughing. Tell him he was hearing a bird or some shit. He says he knows for a fact it wasn't a bird. The whole time he has this dead ass stare, might have been in shock but I wouldn't know. Just kept looking at the tent like he could see through it, and was scanning the area. Tell him to go to sleep. Looks at me like Hess looking through me and just says, yeah, and walks out of the tent. Laying in my tent thinking what the hell just happened. Then I hear it off in the distance. Sounded like laughing mixed with coughing. Yell, listen, mother snuggler, I know that's you doing that stupid ass laugh. He replies back, in his tent that it's not him and it's what he heard earlier. Tell him it's far off and probably some weird ass animal. Can hear the laughing getting closer and closer though. Laughing gets closer and closer. Tell him to come to my tent, so I know it's not him. Truthfully I was scared as shit. Hear him sprint out of his tent and he gets in mine. Definitely not him, can still hear it off in the distance. The closer it gets the scarier it sounds. Suddenly it stops. Silence for a whole 5 minutes then we hear the huffing. Sounds just like a mother bear huffing, link related. Huffing is right outside the tent. 
freaking out at this point. Huffing is literally right outside the tent. Just start yelling absurd insults and generally sounding crazy. Whatever was outside the tent, bursts out laughing like a freaking maniac. Hear it stomping around laughing. Slams into a tree. Can hear twigs and leaves hitting the top of the tent. Frozen in fear. Laughing stops. Huffing starts again. Scared to do anything. Hear huffing all frigging night. Literally all night. Not a wink of sleep. In my cramped tent with my nerdy ass friend. When sun is fully out we get the balls to go outside. Nothing outside, nothing has been moved. Cooler full of food not touched. Look at the tree that our tent is under. Huge area of missing bark on the tree. Say screw this not staying another night, not ever. Pack up our shit and leave. Mofo always asks to go back. Tell him I'm never going back there. He asks me like once every two weeks. It's been six months since it happened and I haven't hung out with him since. He asks me like Hess addicted to it. Practically begs me. Still has that thousand mile stare, too. Short but my jimmies were never the same. A few years ago, I was out deer hunting, sitting in a tree stand around 5 am, just barely turning to twilight. I hear twigs cracking, leaves rustling, so I know a big buck or maybe a few deer are close, and getting nearer. As it gets lighter, I hear it louder, and spread out, so I peek around and see probably 200 deer of all sorts steadily walking as a tight crowd, like a Spartan phalanx. I promptly silently internally shit myself until the venison armada passes, then go home, and I haven't hunted since. This was in Arkansas 45 minutes south of Fayetteville. Colorado here. Black Forest. Be me. Be two years ago. A night owl, such as I am now, awake around 0300. See large shape near trash cans on road. Think to myself, oh shit, another bear. Stands up. Clearly nothing that size around here that I've ever seen. And I've seen just about every critter Colorado has to offer. Whatever it was, it was huge, broad, and fast. I remember thinking that I was foolish being next to a bay window like that. This one is a series of three stories, all related to the same set of events. These stories take place 10 to 15 years ago, next to a huge set of woods just north of Austin, Texas. Part 1, Recon. 12 or so, hanging out with close-knit group of friends. The kind of kids who prefer to wander, and build shit out in the woods, than to participate in organized sports. Large area of forest between the two neighborhoods that we live in. We have spent years mapping out areas of the woods, building forts slash stashing things we find at our, vases. Wagons, tools, rope, nails, boards, shopping carts, camping slash fishing gear, etc., most of the areas we have named after locations in the J.R.R. Tolkien books. One night, around 8 p.m., a group of eight of us are playing war games in two separate areas of the woods, probably a half mile apart from each other. My group, four people total, are defending this old, dried up pond we call Helm's Deep. Pond is really only the size of a small watering hole, and has since become overgrown with trees in the center and outsides a perfect bowl shape for camping and role-playing a sieges. The second group of four is in a woodline, about to stage their final attack before we all turn in for the night, most of our parents don't like us out past ten, even during the summer months. The wood line and our watering hole is separated by about 800 meters of open grasslands, much of the grass. Waist shoulder high, we were still all pretty short, with a dirt road running almost smack through the middle of the field, that sometimes older people use to ride their recreational vehicles on. From across the field I see one of my friends on the attacking team signal with a large piece of cloth draped over a stick this is the signal that the attack is going to begin. As he raises the flag, all eight of us observe a dust trail moving along the dirt road that bisects the grasslands, with two headlights, and a large spotlight on the back, 
slowly panning the fields and grasslands. As the dust cloud grows, we can all see a flatbed pickup truck hauling us towards a bend in the road that is only about 200 meters from where we watch on the edge of the bowl. Sure enough, as the truck hits the bend in the road, it stops, and three men hop out of it. I look across the field, but the attackers for the war games have disappeared. All four of us defenders are proned out along the rim of this bowl, observing these men. By this time it probably 8.15 or so, and the light is getting bad, so we are forced to listen instead the only problem is that they are 200 meters away. We talk amongst ourselves, and we decide that I will go along with one of my friends, and the two youngest, my brother and his friend, will stay on the bowl watching us, the two scouts, gather intel. At this point, it was just a game, and more of a let's see how close we can get to them before they spot us. Me and the second scout Wade, bent over, into the tall grass, careful not to make too much noise, tough because it hadn't rained much that summer, and the grass was dry. We get within feet of the dirt road, and we stop dead in our tracks. Two of the men are talking heatedly, obviously looking for somebody, both out of our line of sight, rummaging in the bed of the truck. What makes us both stop and hold our breath, is the third man, who is standing probably 10 feet from where we hide in the brush. He is wearing a flannel shirt, work gloves, and waders, the sort of overalls you wear when fishing in a creek slash lake, and on his face he is wearing some sort of a burlap mask, or sack. In his hands he is a firearm, holding it loosely at waist level the light was bad, but I think it was some sort of a shotgun. I look to my friend next to me, and he shakes his head emphatically, no. I look back across the road, and I see four sets of eyes in the brush on the other side staring at us the attacking. Group from the war games has had the same idea, and both of us are listening to the two men behind the truck. Argue about how so and so wasn't watching, and she got away. He must have been trying to get a better position, because when I looked back at my friend on my side of the road, he was fidgeting, and eventually went ass over tits into the grass, casing the brush to crackle extremely loud. I look back to the man standing only a few feet of way into the road, and he is looking dead at our position, and I have to fight to not get up and sprint away. The front of his burlap mask had crudely cut holes for eyes, and no mouth hole it would have looked comical if he wasn't holding a shotgun. He stares in our direction for what seems like forever, and he is finally called back to the flatbed with by the two friends, who have finished rearranging things in the bed of the truck. They all pack up, turn on the headlights and spotlight on the truck again, and head out. We ended up waiting five minutes before both groups decided it was safe to meet in the middle of the road. We compared descriptions, and according to the attacking group across the road, the two men rummaging in the truck were dressed similarly to the first man in the middle of the road. We all talked for a few minutes about what they could have been looking for, and decided that they were probably poaching deer or animals, and were wearing masks so if somebody saw them, they would not be directly identified. We all agreed it was lucky that we weren't spotted slash accidentally shot, and made our separate ways home for the night. Part 2 incoming, didn't pre-type anything but this story, so it may take a few. About three weeks after the first incident involving what we thought were poachers. Father was being a real asshole this day, and I was not able to meet up with my friends until after supper, summer cleaning slash chores. I call my friend's house, and his mother says that the regular group of guys are all in the woods, again, and that I should run out and find them. I quickly throw on some long sleeves, jeans and a jacket, and head out to find where they may have been playing slash exploring. My brother had plans with other friends, and was not going to join me. I never bother to take a flashlight slash torch, because the weather during the summer is usually clear around July, and the light from the moon slash stars is usually enough to navigate by using familiar trails and terrain features. I make my way across the creek behind my neighborhood, the terrain feature that marks the start of inner woods in this area, and climb the steep embankment on the other side. This embankment is man-made, probably by a bulldozer of some sort, and overlooks the grasslands, recreational vehicle trails, 
and footpaths on the plains below. It is a great spot to look for flashlight beams in the distance, or to listen for voices in the fields. By this time it is already extremely dark, and on a trail below I hear footfalls, and a few tidbits of chatter and laughter. I climb down the embankment, and I shuffle over to my familiar group of friends, only three this time, all of whom were heading home. We all climb back up the embankment, meaning to cross the creek on the other side of this man-made bridge or plateau, when we hear a group of other voices. Curious as ever, we all hunch over, and quietly make our way to an area of this embankment that would provide the clearest vantage point on the trail we hear the voices moving down. We all get into position, crouching instead of laying down, the area we were at was extremely rocky, and it was dark already, so crouching would be enough to hide our outlines. We wait about five minutes, the voices growing louder, and we see three figures enter the trail below us, two men, and one woman. The woman is in the center, appears extremely dirty, and sounds like she is either sobbing, or laughing lightly. The men are on either side of her, both holding on of the woman's arms each. And both men are dressed as they were on our first encounter long sleeves, crude burlap masks, and weapons on both of them. The one closest to us has an axe handle, and a large keering of some sort hanging from his belt. The men are lecturing the woman, talking about how she can't be roaming outside by herself. And how they were just trying to protect her, and keep her safe. They continue to walk closer to our field of view, and I see the woman's face, it is emotionless. No fear, not sadness, just resignation. All four of us exchange glances with each other, acknowledging the fact that these were the same men from before, and wait until the group is out of eyesight slash earshot before making our way back across the creek, and into our neighborhood. Later that night, we decided to tell my friend's father what had happened. He asked if we saw anybody hurt slash being hurt, we told him no. He asked if we saw anything that looked blatantly illegal happening, and again we said no. So, the issue was dropped. For the time being. A full year after the sighting of the woman on the trail, we all decide that we are going to go camping. During this time period, much of the woods was being demolished and leveled for real estate development companies and we thought it would be cool to camp out under a newly constructed and paved bridge in the woods, where they were building a new housing development. We all trek out around 8 p.m., and make our way through the forest, and the same field where we first saw the men with the burlap masks. We are chatting and joking, and eventually we reach the bridge, and set up camp. It is damn near pitch black, so we all decide that the first order of business was to gather wood. We split up, and start collecting small pieces of tinder slash paper that people and construction crews had thrown onto the ground. About 15 minutes into gathering wood, one of my friends starts arguing loudly with another. I go to investigate, and friend A is yelling at friend B for throwing shit at him while he is picking up firewood. Friend B swears to Christ he isn't throwing anything, and we eventually get the fire constructed. A few hours later, after we had burned gasoline, thrown aerosol cans into the fire, and generally had finished acting like idiots, we started sharing stories about the woods. One of our friends goes out to piss, and returns, white-faced. He says while he was pissing, he saw slash heard somebody moving around in the brush next to the tree line, about 20 meters away. We tell him to calm down, and that it was probably an animal several times during the spring we had nearly stepped on bobcats protecting litters of their young. The loudest scream slash growl I have ever heard. It will make you shit your pants. We eventually all settle down, and one by one we fall asleep, but we allow the fire to burn as we do, in case it is some sort of a scavenger slash predator animal. At around 3 in the morning, we are all awoken by flashlights, and harsh voices, telling us we need to get up. I shake myself awake, and see a firefighter and a police officer standing on the concrete embankment at the top of the bridge we are camping under, they had pulled a couple of police cruisers, and one fire engine on top of the bridge, using one of the newly paved roads. They make us call our parents, 
tell us we should have known better than to start a fire and leave it unattended, one of the cops even finds an ancient pack of cigarettes that was discarded, it was moldy as hell, and starts to interrogate us which one of you was smoking? Anyways, when it is all said and done, it is my mother who picks us up in her minivan, and carts us home. As we are loading up, one of the police officers turns to my mother and says you know, when I showed up, there was a really creepy guy in red plaid that was standing at the edge of their camp, watching the whole group sleep. The cop goes on, this guy was extremely evasive, smelled like he hadn't showered in weeks. When I asked him what he was doing, he said that you guys had invited him for the party? The cop said, I tried to ask him for some identification, but he took off into the brush before I could approach him. You kids need to pick smarter places to camp. I exchanged looks with my friends, and I asked him from the back seat, hey, was he wearing a burlap mask? The cop said, no, but it looked like he had something like that hanging from his belt, along with an axe handle. Nope.jpg my friends and I decided that was our last camping excursion, and that it would be best to stick to playing Morrowind indoors. The woods were completely paved over and remodeled into housing developments about a year later. That's it for my childhood in a woods, but I have a few creepy ones about being a US Army soldier in Germany, if anybody wants to hear. Be camping in a woods. Decide to go for a 2 AM walk with my two buddies find somewhat neglected kitty slide in a clearing. No sound at all except for occasional creepy loon calls. Sit there with my buddies looking at the stars and Milky Way. I notice a very slow moving light coming up, almost as if over the horizon. Point it out to my buddies. We think it's an airplane. We watch it for a while. It gets brighter over the course of about a minute. We think it's a satellite because of the way it's moving. I whisper to my buddies hey do you notice it's faster and brighter than it was before? They don't say anything and just keep watching. As it curves over the sky in front of us we notice that it's starting to get faster, accelerating at the same constant rate. At the same time it's getting even brighter. It's now moving really fast, and it's brighter than any star or planet. I'm beginning to get scared. It starts getting a very slight bluish tinge instead of white. It suddenly ramps up in speed and disappears. I whisper what the fug. Our faces when we just saw a frigging jump to warp speed. Here is a personal one that happened to me a week ago. Walking home from work because my bike got a flat tire. The walk is long as hell, and it has been raining since two days and it's pretty stormy. Get onto the railway because I'm bored and I wanted to take some pics. No trains have been used there since 5 to 6 years. Snap some pics which turn out great. Continue walking down the rails. Then I notice an old building, ruin? In the middle of the forest which I had never seen before because the rails, which are about 2 meters above the pathways level had been blocking my sight. Holy shit that looks creepy. Snap a pic. That's when I noticed a very heavy stench in the air. It smelled like rust and wet dog. Get off the rails and onto the pathway. Notice a guy jogging and feel relief. But there is something off about the guy. His movements don't feel natural. It's like he just learned how to run. The smell gets stronger and as the guy passes by I look at him and he has a weird smile on his face. I nope.jpg, like hell and start running. I look left and notice something red on a tree that's a few meters from the path. Go check because I'm an idiot. It's a frigging scarf stuck onto a branch. That's not all. It's dry. The rain stopped about half an hour ago. Run like hell and lock the doors when I get home. Since then whenever I walk my dog I always get this uneasy feeling of being stalked and my dog usually acts weird too. This is where the building was. Okay, here is my personal experience about investigating old abandoned manor. Me and my friends decide to go and check old manor in the woods because why not? We pack our shit and drive to the woods. It's getting dark and weather is screwed up, like it's going to rain. 
leave car on the edge of the wood and take a walk through spooky path leading to manor. On our way there we meet some lesbian looking black girl who asks us if we need anything and that she is in a hurry. Ah uh, no thanks. We all nope a bit but continue to manor, junkies are probably visiting that place often. We get there, shit looks old and dirty as hell. There is some sort of creek nearby manor and wooden boathouse by the pond. On the other side, there is some big ass cave. Screw the cave, don't want to break my legs there. We get inside the manor. A lot of dirty rooms with all kind of shit around. We get to the big room slash hall with the piano inside it. It acutely looks nice with last rays of the sun going through the windows. We decide to separate and one team to go investigate the basement and other to stay up. Im on the team that stays up. Other team goes down to the basement through some old wooden staircase and door frame without doors, just some old blanket. I walk around the house, find a small dark room. There is something on the floor. It's old .44 Magnum that seemed to still work. Whoa dude. I hear other team calling us to get down in the basement. Basement is really creepy, old and rusted generators and pipes all around. They found some bullets, old machete and similar shit. Shit must be old, manor is at least from 19th century. We hear some light but fast footsteps up above us. It's just fox or some wild animal, we are in the middle of nowhere after all. Still, we all got chills from being down here so we decided to go up. Footsteps moving from one room to another. Even more chills. Someone got shit scared, saying he heard whispers. Nah dude, it's only your imagination it's really creepy down here. He insists we head home. We try to calm him down but he is persistent to go home. We think maybe some junkies are back and it would actually be smart to leave now. Halfway through upper floor we hear something landing on the floor near entrance. Friend with machete pulls it out, scared some junkies might be aggressive. We slowly make our way there but there is nothing to see. With fast pace we all walk outside nervously. Friend who was last in the group took a last look back inside. He screamed like a bitch and scared the living shit out of us. We all see some way too big spider-like thing jumping out of the manor and running towards us. Everyone is looking at that thing and no one notices Flesh Pound charging straight at me. MFW when Flesh Pound just killed me. The face when no face. Killing floor. Only people that know this story are family members as far as I know. Me and family are camping in Sierra Nevada mountains in 2005. We are up there for 4 days and 3 nights. On second day me and some cousins take my dad's truck and drive around. We get kind of lost but don't care and we come across this trail. Drive on trail. Trail seems completely forgotten, as there are bushes on side of trail that make it kind of hard to drive without getting scratched. Keep on taking this trail till it abruptly ends. So now we are in middle of nowhere. See a creek and follow it. Decide to relax and have a couple beers. Decide to follow creek and see where it leads. Damn thing goes on forever but leads to sort of bank and we go on ahead and see what is beyond. Starting to get dark. Go on a bit further. We are lost. Hear a noise in distance and decide to go and see if it is fellow campers. Lost sound. No completely dark. Hear sound again and follow. Can smell burning wood in air. We feel relieved that we might come across camp. Two of my cousins tell me to stop because they saw something. Said they saw hooded figures. I said, what? They tell me to just hang back a bit. I agree. We notice campsite is a lot more like a very cramped village. Little huts or cabins are throughout sight. I say excuse me to get however is in sight attention. I finally see about four hooded figures. One says don't come any further. Approaches me. Says I'm a long way from where I belong. I ask for directions back to creek we were following. Figure says it can't help me on that but can assist in something else. I say that's okay and just want to leave. Got bad vibes. Can't see my cousins. Ask where they are at. Figure says he saw them run off. 
I am panicking now. I yell out stay away dude. Figure says something like that isn't going to happen. In quickly looking around sight and notice strange things from what I can tell in the limited light. See a tarp with someone in it. Is that person dead? I'm seriously freaked the frigged out and think I'm gonna die. Start to cry a bit. I see a bench with a bunch of knives and other stuff. I take off and run for life. No idea where I'm running to but frigate. I finally hear and follow Creek back to truck. See my cousins there and frigging yell at them for leaving me back there. Said they're sorry and said they freaked out after they saw something. Ask what they saw. Said they noticed a tent not too far from where they were at saw what they thought was a body cut up. I say let's get the hell out of here. We do. Get back to campsite and the family members that are still up are frigging worried sick about us. Tell them what we say. Don't believe us. In like what? My aunt says she saw us at campsite nearby and said we said we're gonna be out for a bit longer. Totally mind fucked. B-13. Boy Scout Summer Camp. First night. First summer camp out miss my parents. Wake up at 1 o'clock and hear growling. Noises around the campsite, we were on the edge of camp. Hear smashing and shit. Tent buddy is asleep, but can hear other tents talking. Fall asleep eventually. Next morning, cooler was smashed and all of the chewy bars were taken. Don't remember being scared, but some kids were scared to death. Also, B-15. Still boy scouts. In tent alone, more experienced, I don't need a tent buddy. Wake up again real early, need to piss like crazy. Hear frigging loud blood chilling howling. Don't want to leave tent. Hold and piss so that it's painful for hours. I hear horses whinnying too. Somehow pass out. Wake up later. Half pissed myself in sleep. Learn that the horse ranch a few 100 feet down the road on camp was attacked by coyotes or wolves, something like that. Two horses missing, and one disembodied and found. California. Screw it I'm just going to start dumping my majorly freaky stories about all kinds of shit. The first set, Civil War reenactments. Be my first year reenacting. Go to the biggest battle in my state. A lusty. Hearing all kinds of freaky shit the first day about what happens at night. Battle is always held on the anniversary weekend of the original battle. Enter fat goddamn sergeant. I was guarding the graveyard when I swear I saw a confederate guard walk up to me, smile, and disappear. Heard footsteps all night. Lol whatever dot jpg. Enter new friend, thumper, I got put on a patrol with. Every year during the witching hour a heavy fog settles over the field and you can hear the battle anywhere but the field. What a bunch of horse shit. I believe in ghosts but that's ridiculous. The about midnight, we're all smoking corncob pipes and messing around. Hear a single rifle shot from the direction of the battlefield. Thumper just says, it's starting. Positive it was just some bored soldier. Cannons start going off. Shit tons of rifle fire, legitimately sounds like there are entire brigades of men out there fighting. Even make out an occasional echoing scream. Man, screw this I want to investigate. I start booking it to the battlefield. The guys start following. I almost think it's a prank but no one's laughing, just kind of somber. A few guys even look scared. As I get closer the sounds of battle seem to be fading but still obviously in that direction. Get to the field. No war sounds anymore. What the actual hell. Just as promised, ridiculous low but thick fog over the field. That just doesn't happen in Florida, not really, not at the temperature it was. There are a few people around. Start talking to them hearing how they've been coming to this battle for years and every night freaky shit happens. Including a train conductor telling a guy in the field to get off the tracks. Train track got torn up in the battle and completely disused in the 1920s. Finally start heading to the tree line where we can see a group of three people taking pictures. Go over to them and start talking. 
They show us pictures that caught ridiculous amounts of orbs. I was thinking orbs are total bullshit. The entire time on the tree line getting this horribly violent feeling. Seeing red orange flashes in the darkness and shadows that look like people and, to everyone I was with 8 people a few horses. Freaking out. Thought occurs to me. Ask what side of the field we're on. Oh Yankee. Looks at our confederate uniforms. Look at my CSA buck knife. Oh fog me dot jpg. Several of the guys swear they can hear bullets whizzing past, and we all shut up and listen and there's distinct. Buzzing. Kind of like bees flying past, except night time and there being no bees. We realize the huge mistake and the people we met there start urging us to leave or something. Nobody knows what could happen. Guy keeps saying nothing could happen unless they started throwing rocks or something. We're not exactly relieved. Somehow it doesn't sound that bad but it literally paralyzed us with fear. I come up with a possible solution. Look to my buddies. Inform them all to lay down their arms. We pull out bayonets and buck knives and even matches. We set them on the ground and raise our hands like we're surrendering. Noticeable drop in buzzing. Noticeable drop in weird frigging flashes. Even the shadows move less. But still aggressive feeling. Now for part 2 of my plan. Reach into friend's cartridge box. Find the fine southern pipe backy we were smoking. Hold it out. Speak really loudly, feeling like a scared retard. Trade some coffee for some. Backy? Everyone's just kind of looking at me and waiting. Say it a few more times. Aggressiveness seems to lessen. Here leaves crunching towards me. Want to run like a bitch. Noticeable shadow on its way to me till it steps into moonlit area. Group we met starts snapping pictures like madmen. The tobacco flies off of my frigging hand like there was a strong breeze. I frigging feel something dropped into my hand. Presence thing retreats. Later out of the trees. Hand smells like coffee. Pictures have a blue orb directly in front of me. And that was the night I began believing in orbs, to an extent. Got more if anyone wants. Alright, so more. I'm trying to get the cream of the crop here, which means ones that even I sometimes don't believe really happened. Also, these are primarily ones I had witnesses around so I know they did happen. On the topic of reenactments. Marchish 2010. Have a weird ass dream. Goes as follows. Just bought a new house on this lake with some folks. Can see Disney fireworks across the lake, 10 tenths cool shit. A friend from HS also moved in a few houses down. For the most part the lake is dark. Be walking along lake at night. Hear this splashing in the lake. This dead possum comes out of the lake after me. What the hell? Get to friend's house after noping the hell out. Chill with him in his driveway, dreams have little use for common sense, I guess. This messed up dead gator comes splashing out of the water. We beat it back from whence it came together. Go into his house to look for a gun. No gun. Go back out. Partly decomposed engine is crawling out of the water. Screw this shit I'm out. I run. I can hear friends screaming. Halfway to my house I get tired and can hear another engine crawling out of the water. Hear it speak something unintelligible at me like a warning or something grabbing my ankle. Kick it in the frigging face and run home. House is empty. All the lights are on. Holy shit what the hell is happening. Disney fireworks stop. Hear something huge coming out of the lake, and just feel wave after wave of this horribly evil presence. This dream stuck with me for a long time. You'll see why this is relevant in a moment. Now for reality. March 2011. Head to Narcusi Mills Raid. Cool, cool, there's a playground and all kinds of shit that looks like it'll be cool to chill at night. Set up camp, lots of happy bullshit. Fast forward to that night, about 2100 hours. Me and my best friend are at the playground, 
messing around with this chick he knows and trying to get some. See fireworks across the lake, the playground is on the shore of it. Oh cool, what's that Anon? Oh those are the Disney fireworks. Mind begins whirring at light speed. No connection yet captain. Oh that's cool. Go back to trying to get a disgusting three-way. Head on to this stupid floating metal dock. Here, Yule. The girl saw something by the dock. Look in the water. Bloated, torn up looking dead possum. Still not quite clicking, but definite deja vu feels. Shrug it off. Fast forward to about 0200. We decide to head away from the playground. Pass all these nice houses on the lakeshore. End up just kinda in a woods, but on the edge of the tree line on the shore. We mess around some more. She touched my dick. Hear this big splashing in the water by us. They all look at it scared. I laugh at them, call them pussies, and say it's probably just a gator and if we chill we'll be okay. Splashing turns to something crawling in the mud water through the reeds. Hear this horrible croaking, definite man-sized shape. But with no legs. Open my mouth. Everything clicks. Grab the two by their collars and start hauling them back. Things are splashing to shore the entire way, little and big. Get to the playground. It has lights so we feel safe. See ripples hitting the floating dock. Hear something big splashing towards us. We all feel it. Waves of horrible and unimaginable evil just colliding with us, paralyzing us. It's like imagining the worst death ever, then the worst fate afterwards. I can't even describe it. Somehow like the absence of all hope. We nope the hell out of there at top speed all the way back to camp. Every. Single. Night. We went back. One time we saw the dead possum still floating there, went to use the bathroom, together, I and before fags, came back and it was on the dock. Heard the splashing again the last night, ran like bitches and was happy to not go back. I also heard some drunk guy drowned in that lake one of those nights, found his body all bloated and torn up because gators. I really want to know what it is, but I don't at the same time. That was by far the most horrible and evil thing I've ever encountered. You got it Anon, I only have one thus far though. Be me. Be last year. In my town, Oviedo. I can say this without fear because regular slash x slash files already know me and where I live. Go to the Chapin Celery Fields. There's this rusted up playground there. Really creepy. Decide my friend and I should stop there. We frig around on this frigging weird playground from about 2100 to 2200. Get bored and decide we need to bail. This little kid comes up to us dressed kinda funny not to mention it's frigging 10 at night. He has this random red ball. Can we play ball mister? Uh. What? Mister play ball with me. Friends punched my shoulder and point to a tree. There's this little girl sitting against it. She's crying. What the hell is going on I swear to god we were alone. First thing on my mind is how it will look if cops find us trespassing this late with two little kids. Little girl looks up. Help me find my mommy mister. Girl has no frigging eyes. We ran like little bitches, hop the fence like a couple of Mexicans, and get in the car at a ridiculous speed. Look back a bunch of kids are standing at the fence looking frigging mangled. Peel out trying to flee. Later. Look the place up. Turns out in the 20s or 30s there was a serial killer that would kill little kids and dump the bodies in the celery fields. He ended up missing, never caught. Alright Anon. This one got a lot of attention a while ago, somewhere might be some screenshots of it I don't really know. It's a multi-parter and I'm thinking about going back there to see if anything new happens. The frigging weird woods. Backstory first, in my little town lots of weird shit happens. Partly due, in my opinion, to the fact it was wholly settled by Timu Kwan Injun's ages before Spain killed them all. Just a mile from my house is an Injun burial site. Or, rather, was, 
before Whitey raised it in the early 1800s to make way for a schoolhouse. That kept burning down. Moreover, in some places it may sound like I'm an Inawoods noob, but I am far from it. I was captain of orienteering back in my ROTC days, and I practically live in a woods. So trust me, when I say something's screwed up, something is screwed up. Beginning next post. Be exploring woods one day. They're just off the Oviedo walking trail, that was a railroad until the 1940s. Find a path through tall grass. That's new, cool, I'll check it out. Big frigging clearing after a short walk, all desert with a couple of chairs at a stoner area. Lol nice. Shove through some more. Find another path. Follow it because why not. Find this tower that looks burned made out of broken cinder blocks, maybe 4 feet high. Weird. Keep going. Trail disappears, now officially in the woods. Keep pushing on, because who knows what cool shit I'll find like rattlesnakes. Eventually get to semi-woods, semi-clearing with ground covered in vines. At one point vines concealed a 2 to 3 foot drop. Nearly broke my frigging neck. Screw that, I'm out. Get back in the woods. Follow the exact tree path back to where I entered. Entrance is not there. Wait WTF. Turn around. Retrace steps. Turn again. Every bit of the forest is different. Trees are in different places. New trees are there. Okay what the hell. Ended up lost for a good hour, felt like something was stalking me. Complete watched feeling. Also, it's constant evening in those woods, more so than any I've ever been in. It's also covered in butterflies, which is weird. There are no flowers or anything and it's really thick woods, but shit tons of butterflies. Eventually just force through a shit ton of saw palmetto to get out. Cut up like crazy but free. Leave, perplexed but still curious. Head back again a few days later. Just couldn't stay away, weirdly. Start heading back there. Get to stoner's clearing. Can't find path. Desperately searching. Realize a tree fell over the path. Tree is green. Only fallen tree. There wasn't even a storm. Pretty ready to nope out. For some reason feel the need to go back there again anyway. Basically same experience, except this time I turned around at one point and suddenly there was a swamp. There was definitely no swamp there before. Even to this day, that swamp comes and goes. No rain, no runoff, just random swamp. I don't understand those woods. Feel watched again and nope out fast. Next visit. Go with a friend. It's dusk. We shove back there. Get to stoner's clearing. Show him the tree. Yeah Anon look here where it was cut down. Tree where previously broken has now grown that way, like it did that the entire time. Explain this to him. I pull out this radar app thing I got for ghost hunting. It goes frigging crazy about things past the tree. Almost simultaneously hear this big meaty thump, like if someone drops a deer carcass. We both nope the hell out. Yet another visit. Alone again. Start walking through tall grass path to woods path that leads to stoner's clearing. Wait something doesn't seem right. The other path is completely gone and even a small tree is where it used to be. I don't even understand. Obviously this place is bad news. Continue back there anyway. Felt watched, found like five gopher tortoises crawling away from creeps woods. That one was pretty short and sweet but the path was weird as hell. Like the woods themselves were trying to keep me out, but once I was in was trying to prevent my escape. A few months pass by when I was out of town. Get back first order of business, get to Creeps Woods. With a friend. Find friend. Con friend. Pay friend off with booze to get him to come. Start heading back. Both the real tall grass path and the fake one are there. Little tree is gone. Already getting weird, but I guess I was gone for a while. Get back there. 
same faggotry through stoners clearing and frigged trees hidden path. Pass what I've come to affectionately refer to as humanity's last tower, the cinder blocked tower. On final path to the woods, notice ripped up pillow about six feet from path. Well, get into woods and poke around. When suddenly, find trapdoor in the ground. Looks pretty old and rotten. Weird. Friend and I starts prying off a board. Shit comes off after a while. A cross layered section of board underneath. Decide we'll come back later with a crowbar. Leave. The pillow by final path and now in the middle of the path. We nope the hell out. Friend got too freaked by the woods. Refused to go back with me. Well frigging fine. Don bead use. Strap three different knives to me. Bring titanium rod, my justice stick. Also have crowbarred. Get to the tall grass path. False path is gone. Not really surprised anymore. Head back. Head in a woods. Pillow is off the path again but other than that shit seems pretty normal today. No follower. No watching. Just some woods that make me feel dumb for having been scared. Get to trapdoor. Trapdoor is gone. Just freshly turned dirt and, under some dirt, a gross looking rug. Also a few planks of 4x4. Four four. Start freaking out all over again. Next to it, half of one of those high class balloons. Orange and black, says happy birthday. Get a bad feeling. Swear I hear cackling, yet somehow feels like it's coming from inside my head rather than the woods. Slice. My finger gets cut the hell up from god knows what, all the way around. Nope out so hard. Took pictures of all of this shit will post tomorrow.